Hi everyone. Uh, I saw uh, an email at Haskell Cafe uh, earlier about proxy and uh, suggesting maybe it's time that we can finally get rid of proxy. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, and so I just wanted to, uh, in the process of responding, I realized eh, maybe it'd be kind of fun to be able to see some of this in action. So uh, I'm recording this video to, to show why we unfortunately cannot get rid of proxy in the end. Um, so here we are in, in my Emacs. Um, this is the file that I use to do all sorts of Haskell tomfoolery. It has a lot of extensions, um, as well as a bunch that aren't yet in my, my uh, GHC that I have installed. And so uh, let's, just, let's just see what proxy is. So if I import data.proxy, um, oh, uh, oh, oops, what am I doing? Import data.proxy, import data, well, let me just do it down here. That's fine. I thought that somehow things from the, the file I loaded were in scope. Um, okay, so if I ask for, for proxy, I get all this information. The key thing is, is right here. There we are. So we have proxy. It takes an argument of any kind, k, um, and that's really it. Um, and so this seems useless, right? Because the constructor for proxy doesn't carry any information at all. But proxy is actually useful when we're dealing with ambiguous type variables, right? So if I define a type function that maybe looks like this, um, then maybe I have some other function. Uh, um, I don't know. This is a bit silly, right? But I can have some other function that looks like this, and that's all well and good. But now, if I try to call this g, so h here, uh, let's not call it h; it's not a function. If x, uh, if x has type unit, I can say x equals g of uh, of z like this, and and that's actually well typed in that <clears throat> I can call g at at uh, oh no I can't I can um, I need to call g at something like this something on the right hand side so I can call g true and and that's actually that should be well typed uh, but we don't know uh, what this a should be uh, so one solution to this problem is that I need to provide some other argument that will tell type inference what the a should be and so traditionally that has been proxy so we might say proxy a and now we have two arguments to ignore. And then here I can pass proxy of type proxy bool. Oh, sorry, proxy int. And then everything is okay, right? So this int here is my choice for a. So that means that this a becomes int. And then f int is really bool. So this true type checks at bool and all as well. Um, but writing this out is a real pain. And so instead, uh, we can use type applications. So this is an extension. I'll, um, I'll take g, and then we'll do this, and we'll have g prime, which doesn't have the proxy argument. And then maybe y here, we'll call g prime. And then I can write an at sign int, and that chooses what A should be. So now if I load this, that works. And well, you know, that's not very interesting, is it? But um, here I can get rid of the ambiguity that's inherent in G prime's type. If you if you looked uh, up above, you you would have seen that allow ambiguous types is actually enabled right now. Um, so if we if if um, since this type is ambiguous, we can't figure out what A is given any arguments to G prime, then I have to say what it is, and I can do that with type applications. So it looks like we can get rid of proxy. The problem is, is we can't do this in, in higher rank scenarios. Um, so if I have sort of a strange function that looks like this, um, Again, this is sort of a, a, you know, these are very contrived examples. But th these, uh, take it on faith for now, um, or for this whole video, really. I'm not going to fix this problem. But take it on faith that there are good applications of all of this stuff. Um, and and um, uh, there are proposals out there that, that I'll, I'll point out uh, later that, that detail this in a little bit. Um, but if we have sort of this higher rank scenario here, then I might imagine calling z is higher rank of 
lambda um, lambda x, or we we've already used x. Lambda w is something. Does this work? Define but not use. Oh, I suppose that does work, um, uh, and that's fine. But now let's say I want to somehow refer to the type variable a here. Um, I want to say, for example, w or of type f a, and I get complaints. Cannot match f a one with f a. And, and that's because we don't know that f is injective. And so here I'm saying that this underscore is type f a, but, um, but maybe actually this will be clear if I change this to b, right? If, if I'm saying that this underscore has type f b, then how do I know that this b is really meant to be the same type as this a up here? There's, there's no way to know because f is not injective. I can't know that the, what the type variable is from knowing the result. And it turns out that if I wanted to somehow use b over here, there'd be no way to do this. There's just no way to bind it right now. Um, so instead, I can't do this, and instead I have to use a proxy. And so now I can say z is hr of, I don't care what it is, but it gives me it gives me a way of getting my handle on B, and then I can have this of type FB, and then I still don't care what I do with it. Um, there, that should work. Yes, it does. But now I can freely mention B over here. For example, I can say undefined of type B. Again, this is quite strange. Oh, this didn't like that. Why doesn't it like this? Oh, um, because... I said that it should be unit, so we'll do that. That should work. There we go. Uh, so now I can mention B in the body of this, and I've bound it somewhere. And there was just no way to do this without adding this proxy argument. So the solution would be something, um, let me, uh, it's actually not HR that's interesting. So I'll just have HR, let's copy this, HR2 without the proxy. Um, and it's the z that's more interesting. So this will be z2 um, and using hr2. And what would be really nice, right, so this is, again, this is the example that doesn't work. If I try to compile this, we're going to get uh, can't match fa with fb right down here. Um, but what would be really nice is if I could just bind b using something that looks like this. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, I could try to compile this. Goodness knows what I'll get, a parser, um, because Haskell doesn't support this right now. Um, that's eventually what we want to do. We want to have some way of binding a type variable that corresponds to a for all here. Um, so uh, we actually have proposal number 155 that, um, that does the job. So let's, t let's take a look at that. So proposal number 155, sometime now. Um, binding type variables and lambda expressions, right? This is an accepted proposal. Um, but if, if we sort of dig down to the details, which I don't want to right now, uh, we'll see that the specification for this isn't really very well done, and we can't quite implement it. So we're still working on these details. Bottom line, unfortunately, proxy can't be gotten rid of yet. So we can get rid of proxy in places where we're just sort of passing it to a function, but we can't quite get rid of it in these higher rank situations. So I advocate for keeping it still in the standard library. We'll fix this eventually. Anyway, thanks for listening. Bye.